Backer switching and circuit switching are two modes of data transmission and I might have mentioned them a couple of times in previous videos if you've watched those. But now I want to talk about them in slightly more detail and eventually evaluate them because two different ways we can send data and they're quite useful to talk about. So first of all, obviously to move data it's going from a source computer to a destination computer and the actual process in between, so once you click send on a message, we're not really thinking about what's happening in between. The actual process is hidden from us as regular users, so in other words abstracted, so the detail is removed because we don't want to worry about what's going on when every time we go on the internet and every time we receive or send some data, that's just too much to think about. But the actual process is dependent on whether it's going to be uh, packet switching or circuit switching. And of course this hidden bit is much more complicated than it seems or you'd want to think about. So especially over long distances where there's much more distance between the source and the destination, there are going to be many, many intermediate connections, devices, switches and so on that the data must pass through to get to its destination. So in reality the actual picture is much more chaotic, it's much more complicated. There are tons of routes the data could pass through, tons of different devices it might potentially pass through like routers or switches. The actual infrastructure might be owned by different internet service providers. Some routes might be more dangerous than others. Some might be um, hackers might be operating and trying to intercept data over them. All sorts of stuff might be different countries. Essentially, this hidden part is going to be much more complicated than we want to think about. But the actual way the data is going to get through this is going to be dependent on which mode of transmission we're going to be using. Talking first of all about circuit switching as one of our two methods, a network that's said to be circuit switched requires the two nodes that are going to communicate to actually establish a dedicated communications channel to send the data through. And this channel is what is known as the circuit in the name. So we are basically, we've got two devices and we're just choosing a single route for the data to travel through. So there are lots of different possibilities to get from A to B, but we've chosen this route for whatever reason. And this means all the data is going to flow through only this path. So from the start to the finish, it's only ever going to go through this one route. And this means it is quite reliable. We'll contrast it with packet switching in a minute. But you know where the data is at all points. It's only ever going to go through here. It's not going to get lost. It's not going to wander off on its own and get lost somewhere. It's only ever going to go through this one path. And it can be quite closely monitored. A consequence of circuit switching is that while you've reserved this path for two devices, no other devices can use it. So part of this path, like a section of it, one connection, might be able to be used by another two devices to communicate, but not with circuit switching. So only these two devices can use this path at this time. This leads to something called bandwidth wastage. And bandwidth is like the amount of data that can be sent through a wire or through a network, sort of its capacity. and Assuming this path, parts of this path could handle more data than this computer is going to send, then because no other computer can fill up that space, fill up that empty capacity, it's being wasted. So this is not a very efficient way of sending data. It's also not very time efficient, so it's not space efficient in terms of the bandwidth. It's also not time efficient because there are various stages you have to go through. First of all, you've got to establish this connection. You've got to choose a route and you also got to switch off a route. So you've got to make sure no other device can use this route while you are using it. It's a bit like when there's roadworks and they have to close a road. They've got to first of all make sure there's no cars on the road and switch or and uh, you know signpost people away, close off all the junctions and so on. It's a bit of a pain. It takes a bit of time to do to set up this process. And you've then got to send the data and then you've got to release the connection. So there are two additional steps apart from actually sending the data and they may take a bit of time to do which is slightly inefficient. The classic example of a circuit switch network is old telephone connections whereby you'd call someone up on the landline and there'd be physical switches that would connect you literally to the person just via switches and that would be active for how long you're on the call for and then it would get released but if there were loads of people using it so if there were no spare routes available you wouldn't be able to call the person because there's just no space to do it um, which is a limitation of circuit switching. The main alternative then is packet switching which is what most if not almost all networks use TCP IP is the internet protocol suite it's a packet switching protocol so a packet switch network will divide any data that's getting sent into packets, data packets, 
and then those packets can make their own way to the destination. So before, we're sort of sending just a constant stream of data via this route. It doesn't need to be in nicely defined packets. It probably will be, but it doesn't need to be, um, whereas packet switching needs to have standardized packets that will build up to the total data being sent. If you've got the same sort of map of connections, it may choose as the same route, so this is the same route as before. So one packet might go through this route, but then the second packet will go through another route, perhaps because one of the connections has gone down, maybe there's been some damage, maybe it's very congested, and so it's a better, a router at some point has decided that it wants to avoid that congestion, and so it will go another way. So some packets can go in one direction, and another packet can go in another direction, so they can take different routes to the destination, which is what I mean by saying the packets can go their own way. They don't need to go the same route. As we've discussed, the packet has got several fields, including the header and the actual payload or data that is you know, the subset of the overall data being sent. And the actual devices that are in between these connections, so routers in this case, they will use information in the header of a packet to forward it onwards towards the destination. Beforehand, if we go all the way back to the previous slide, the actual devices in between, let's say they're either routers or switches, they know they've sort of got a static route, they know exactly where it's going to go, so they just forward it on to the other, the next device essentially. They haven't really got any decision making to do. Whereas in a packet switch network, because it's more dynamic, they can make their own decisions based on the IP address. In circuit switching, the data is received in the same order that it was sent in. So there's no mixing up of the order because data is just sent as like a steady stream across the route. This contrasts to packet switching where because packets are going different routes and different routes are going to take different amounts of time, they will arrive in different orders. So they'll arrive in an order which isn't the intended order. And so we need to have a packet number or a sequence number in the header that tells us which packet that is in relation to the total packets expected and this is needed for the device to reassemble it at the other end. As I've said packet switching is what's used almost all the time so let's talk about it the pros and cons in relation to packet switching but of course relating it back to circuit switching too. So first of all packet switching is a much more efficient operation with a circuit switch network you're sort of making a route private so you're sort of making a route private no one else can use it and so you're wasting capacity whereas with packet switching you can send packets wherever they need to go and it's much more um, efficient because multiple devices can use the same connection a related point is that congestion can be eased because you can spread out the packets so in a circuit switching network if the bandwidth is quite low and that one route is very slow because you're sending so much data down it you can't reroute the data it's got to go through that one route whereas here a router can decide to send some data another way to ease congestion which is in itself very efficient. We also can just send data when we want to. We don't have to wait to establish a connection and then afterwards release the connection, both of which will take some time. We can just send data when we want to. So looking at the cons then, which let's keep things in perspective are not that big of a deal because clearly we're using packet switching all the time, so it's not that bad. But some packets may be lost because they're getting spread out. It's possible that a route goes down or a router stops responding and something happens and a packet gets lost. And this is just fixed by retransmitting the packet. So it's not a big deal. This happens all the time. But still, this is less likely to happen in a circuit switching network because the packets are going through a defined route, whereas it's certainly more variable with packet switching. You have no control over where the packets are being routed via, so you don't know the route that's going to happen, you don't know which devices are going to be passing your data through, which could be seen as a security issue. I mean, you're going to want to encrypt your data if it's sensitive, but you still might prefer to use a route you trust as opposed to just a potentially random one. Despite saving some time with having to do this establishment and release, you do still need to decompose your data into packets and then have them reassembled at the other end. And also make sure every packet has some header data, which is taking up some space you could be sending actual data through. This is relatively minor in comparison to this issue of circuit switching, but it still is a bit of a waste of time. And finally, you are dependent on the decisions of routers for this process. In a circuit switch network, you have decided the route ahead of time, so there's no decision making to be made by the devices in between. Whereas here, the routers are making all the decisions, and some are going to be very powerful and make the right decisions, others will maybe choose the slowest routes just because they're not powerful enough. So you are reliant on the routers, but usually they're pretty good.